So, it's the first video of 2019, I'm already feeling like garbage, and I thought I might as well just answer this one question. So, the user Aaron Sounders basically asked this about a week ago, saying that um, most folder examples, in my honest opinion, just put the widget all in the same file, which isn't really realistic, and it doesn't show how you would have to actually extract the widgets into separate files, which I believe is uh, a best practice. Um, it took me a while to find an appropriate example, and even when I did, I felt that example did not properly explain the difference between pushing a new page widget and replacing the page widget when structuring the navigation stack for an application. My approach is to always push replacement when selecting an item from the drawer and push when changing from one page to another. And then he says basically just refer to the um, documentation for the navigator class. Uh, the code and the rest of the details are here in a blog post. Um, he then links to a medium blog post and of course I responded back uh, with a reply but I don't know, I guess there's a language barrier between the two of us because it's either I don't understand what he was asking or he doesn't understand my response. But so I'm going to say this first and foremost, if you're starting out with Flutter or if you're essentially you're using Dart as your very first language, one thing you do have to understand is you're going to be doing an object oriented design or essentially you're using an object oriented language. Um, so what exactly is an object oriented language? I'm not going to explain in this video, in fact, I'm going to link to another video which is going to be right in the description box down below, slash maybe even to a Wikipedia article, because you know what, if uh, that way works for my professors at a university and they have tenure, it's going to work for me as an undergraduate, so happy reading. Anyways, so let's get started with what exactly you're trying to ask for as far as making separate dot dart files um essentially being able to interact with your uh your application so let's uh jump right into it uh again i'm not going to explain how exactly to set up flutter again there are many many tutorials out there more or less i can explain it better what i'm essentially doing in this video is i'm going to be explaining how to make a separate um dot dart file one for your main dot dart and one for your actual drawer uh, for the application so we're going to actually just kind of go into the desktop right now and so let's do uh, the flutter create project and i'm going to just do for ios swift and i believe i put in the name here which is going to be the um, drawer. So what I mentioned before is that you need to understand the object-oriented design of an application. Now what exactly does that mean? It means that you're going to be using some inheritance in order for the classes to actually, well, coincide slash work with one another, especially when you're trying to do it this way. Um, I could do a deep dive into actually how inheritance works in the object-oriented paradigm, but again, I don't care. I'm just going to show you how to do the uh, whole, you know, thing that I'm doing. So let's do this. So CD drawer. Okay, so we have this. I'm going to just open up Visual Studio Code now, and that should pop that up that project so that you guys don't have to see my horrible code and you can see pretty much from the get-go all of our code is set up here that's pretty much just you know default flutter just doing that kind of stuff so now that we have cleaned up all of our code here let's get started on that drawer that we mentioned earlier all right, so first off, uh, as you can see here, again, I'm gonna try and blow this up so that you guys can see. Um, we have our little drawer right there. Again, just close, yeah, just make that a little smaller. Um, we have our drawer right here, and that is pretty much going to be telling the application within our scaffold um, widget that, hey, there is going to be a drawer here. Now, I believe that um, if you decide to use the iOS route of things, so the 
Cupertino scaffold. It might have something similar, but it might not. So just remember, we're going to be using the material dart, dart widget. Um, let's just go ahead and add some code here. And we're going to actually create a drawer.dart. So drawer.dart. So within our drawer class, I brought in the material.dart um, file. Uh, what that is going to do is, well, it's going to allow me to use all the material widgets. Now, if I understand the question that was given to me correctly, what they wanted to do was essentially inherit from an already existing drawer class. So in this way, I actually just created a custom drawer class, which extends drawer. Um, this is just an inheritance um, functionality within just regular object-oriented languages. You can actually uh, take a drawer object and implement it into your own custom class if that's what you want to do. Granted, you can add more functionality if you wanted to, if you want to add like some data networking stuff or data protocol stuff in your custom drawer, then you totally can do it in here. Uh, what we're going to do actually is we are going to take a child and we're going to just have a, uh, I don't know, a column. And that column will contain children. And we're going to have, guess, uh, well, I mean, we could also have just flat buttons, but flat button and this one, again, you can customize what functionality you want in it. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna add some stuff here. So this is going to take me to the next screen. Let's say, next screen. And basically, I'm going to do this. It is, it is some very basic comp sci intro level stuff. Um, I'm not gonna worry too much about it, but in this case, yeah. Uh, now, what I'm going to do here, and you'll see what I'm doing as well, is I'm essentially adding a, uh, basically the navigator object so that I can actually push um, the context of the application onto another screen. In this way, I'll just do this. So what we could do is we could do a new new material route, material page route, and we can call in a builder object. Uh, the builder is of the context, context, and we are going to push a function into that, like so. What we're going to do is we're actually going to take I should call this an integer. Int, sorry. Int number. Um, I'm going to call that equal to one. One. But what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to say um, basically a my homepage. My homepage. Oops. So import in, forgot to bring this in as well, which is going to be uh, domain.dart. Bring that in here. I'm going to say this. Uh, main homepage. Where is it? Homepage. My homepage. Uh, I'm going to actually do this. Actually, bring in a final 
final int and number. And basically, I'm just going to set So this dot title, this dot number, this dot number, and secret dot key. I'm going to actually call uh, oops. this is not this dot context dot. This dot widget dot number. Okay, so I'm basically going to say that for this, I'm going to push in a number, push in a title, um, whenever I go into this menu, and essentially it'll have a you new know, number slash title. In this way, I will have this default to I think I think I'll call this default for now, and this will be one. So in the drawer here, what we're going to do is we're going to pass that. And for the title, we're going to say second page, second page. And for the number, which you are going to see on screen, it's going to be two. Okie dokie. So you can see right here, we were able to push onto the next screen. We essentially had some buttons here and we're going to do the same thing as well with the next button right here so we'll have a basically this will be static buttons so technically it could just be stateless widgets um, in this case you know it technically is uh, and we're going to do a third page let's say so that you can see that this is actually an action and I'm pretty much just doing this on the fly I haven't really written anything down I'm just like yeah, it's Saturday night. I feel like just making this myself. Uh, remove that. Expect an identifier. Okay. So for this one now, uh, because we have this drawer that's kind of left hanging there, let's go ahead and give it an actual drawer. So in this case, we're going to do import. Um, and because we kept this code relatively simple, we just bring in drawer.dart. And what we bring in here is going to be custom drawer. Custom drawer. Um, what we're actually going to do is we're going to do this. So I'm going to do dot number uh, other than that one. So basically what I've written here in this line of code is this should give us a result or at least a Uh, let's see if I have devices on here. Should have a device. Okay, cool. So flutter run dash d item. So essentially, what I wrote here in this line, line forty four, is basically an optional. Um, if it detects that the number is null, which on its first initialization technically it should be null, um, it will instead of giving a null, give a one. Technically, uh, hypothetically speaking. I know it should work, but you know, you never know until you know, right? I mean, w right now we're dealing with Murphy's Law. This is like Murphy's Law at its finest because, again, I didn't really practice anything. I just said, you know what? It's Saturday, Sunday. Forget it. <laughs> I haven't posted anything on this channel in a long time, and I apologize for that. But I thought this question was important enough for you to really try to understand. So here you go. And you can see in the uh, example here, it does work. So obviously this number was null, which I mean, big shock. I mean, come on, come on. I didn't, I, I didn't set a value for that. All right, so now what should happen here is you can see that we have the drawer and we have our custom drawer code in here. So will the custom drawer show up? Three, two, and boom. You can see the custom drawer sh showed up. What happened to all my other buttons? <laughs> Uh, oh, well, okay, let's see what happens here. Ah, yes, it is, there's an offset. 
there. Forgot to say this. Okay, first off, right? Because you have the scaffold, you have the body, you have the boo doo doo doo. Dang it, I forgot. Uh, because we are dealing with an iPhone X model version and all those rounded corners, you actually need to bring in a save, save area, and ba -do -ba -do. okay. So save area, child, child, center, and Okay. For many of you wondering what exactly I'm looking at, I'm basically looking at the example that I sent him, but because that thing's a whole jumbled mess, just like my life right now, um, yeah, I'm just making this simpler version so that you guys understand what the heck is happening. How careless of me to not do that. So I'm actually going to remove this at a safe area, um, because again, you need to be able to add that safe area so that's uh, essentially, when you render out from Flutter code to your main application, you want to make sure that obviously first and foremost that it does fit all screens. Now, a safe area object or a safe area widget for many of you that probably don't know this is essentially just accounting for the fact that there are bezels, which you can see here, and it just kind of cuts it off because essentially what the phone is doing by default is it's rendering right right there so you can see if I press and hold here I don't know if it's yeah you can kind of see it there um, as I press and hold it it did kind of gray out that's mainly because essentially from the software perspective here uh, basically that little notch on the top of the iPhone X uh, it's still technically uh, there's technically still coordinates still being rendered behind that uh, notch um, you're not seeing it because well reasons Apple innovation courage let's look here okay great so now you can see that because I wrapped it in a safe area widget um, essentially you'd be able to see both in the next screen and the third screen so let's do hang on let me just make this a lot more clear of what I'm trying to illustrate here. So again, you can make different things here within your actual drawer widget. Um, in this case, I actually brought in the second screen and the third screen. Obviously you have second screen, third screen. I haven't done anything to deal with states and I haven't shown that in this video, video but mainly because I just wanted to get across in this video um, how essentially to do this, uh, I guess, inherited view model for um, Flutter. Again, it's more along the lines of just being able to reuse the code later. So if there's something that I really like about the custom dark drawer class that I made here, and I want to implement that in another application, then I technically could. Now, if you're trying to build this out for an actual company, I mean, you shouldn't, but I mean the base code it's right there now if at this point the tutorial and everything that I kind of explained felt a little rushed or maybe I didn't really clarify anything please just let me know in the comments down below because obviously uh, trying to talk to a camera at midnight on a Saturday is not my cup of tea seriously speaking of which I probably have my tea burning downstairs I should probably go check on that Thank you.